Really? <laughs> guys, we're back. This is Trisha. And guess guess who's still with us? Why didn't you laugh before? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, you know. yeah, I'll continue on this as long as you let me. <laughs> oh my Hi, god. guys. Oh my god, Laura, you can move in with us. I've always said to Zach, I'm like, wouldn't it be fun to just have a friend? <laughs> friend live with us? <laughs> no, seriously, Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell, like their best friend, Monica. Oh, you know, I'm very she, familiar. She lives with them, and I'm kind of like... She doesn't live with them. Yeah, she did. She did for a while. She started as an assistant and then became such good friends with them. She lived with them. Now I don't think she does. But Kristen Bell was interviewed. She definitely doesn't anymore. But Kristen Bell was interviewed saying, Dex and I just get along better when Monica's there. I just love having a third person. I'm like, so really, I want to pick someone who always agrees with me. Oh. It's not going to be me, though. I don't always agree with you. Just I now I disagreed with you. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're right. Just having a third person, though, and I think you'd be great. Sure. <laughs> would you move in too? No, I would never. Exactly. But I'd like to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You won't always agree with me. You know what? That's healthier. That's true. Yeah, that's better. Oh, look at me agreeing with you. <laughs> See? See how I can do that? <laughs> All right. So we are doing uh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend Season 2. Ooh. Yes. Hopefully you guys She's a just a girl in love. She's just a girl in she love. She can't be held responsible for her actions. She can't be held responsible for her actions. I love it. That's, this is probably my favorite like opening sequence. For two. my action. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. It's like a like, Betty Boop. Like, mm-hmm. oh, totally. I love it. And the fact that they changed um, theme songs between seasons is so unique mm-hmm. to this show and so brilliant because it truly shows... That and the title changes has really shown the growth of the character and how the series is going. So, a hundred percent, because the theme songs, just like how we talked about for or in the previous episode, the numbers, they all tell us something. Mm-hmm. So she she's telling us something with the theme song that we will now with the second season. We're like, oh, we kind of figured out what the theme song was for the first season, what that meant. And then the second season builds on that and tells us something about this second season. And every song moves the plot along, gives us more information. 100%. I love the way that this, these characters are written, um, that they are self-aware and we are catching up. Um, And I feel like in this one, we got so much more information about Rebecca's history, especially towards the end of the season about like, where this is maybe a pattern. Yeah. This is... Is this where we get a, like, there's a fire? Is that where we learn? Or is that season three? Yeah, the end of season two. Okay, right. Um, and then, um, oh my god, who's the guy who's, like, in love with her? Trent. Trent is, oh, I love him. So horrifying. I want to be best friends with Trent. Like, I want to cut that turtleneck. How dare you say that about the love of my life, Trent? <laughs> he is awesome. He's I mean, an awesome character because he totally, character. he totally tricks you. Yeah, that's right, because he's not, does he act like he's someone who he's not, or he, does he, Well, how does he infiltrate? Pretend, um, she needs a pretend boyfriend. Um, oh, right. Yeah. But later so he she, comes in and gets weird, though, like, because he follows her after, like, he latches on. She basically finds this rando, and then he latches yeah. on. Because of her magnetic reality distortion. Right, and deal. you think for a second that he's just like her, and then... He really turns it on its head. <laughs> and then you're like, you're crazier. Yeah. Yeah. He's a crazy ex-boyfriend. Um, but he's so interesting. And he's her crazy ex-boyfriend. I, I'm so mad. Now you that. can say it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's her crazy ex-boyfriend. Okay. I couldn't relish that title. So what, what's the, the um, quick and dirty for season two? Season two? Um, just me. Okay, so season two starts with Rebecca Bunch, um, who is still trying to pursue the object of her obsession, Josh Chan, uh, and her quest for true happiness, which is a little bit more vague, this this description, but we it's probably that way because we've already met these characters, we already mm-hmm. know the object of her obsession is Josh Chan, and... So in this season, we found out whether or not they end up together. Like, this mm-hmm. could really be, a, like, a series ender. Like, totally. 
mission accomplished. I now have or do not have the object of my affection. Um, and Rebecca's still willing to do the really amazing thing to get him. And I appreciate that. You're totally right. right. And thankfully, CW gave him more seasons to make the story even better. Yes. yes. Because actually, I, I read something. It was pretty interesting. Um, said something like with rom-coms, the the depth of the female character is typically revealed once the will they, won't they conflict is resolved. But typically the depth that's revealed is that is the writer's inability to explore the female past that, mm-hmm. right? So it kind of, they turn it on its head because they go way past the will they, won't they. Oh, and yeah. then they, like, are they, aren't they? Are they, aren't they, should they, shouldn't they? Should they? <laughs> for each yeah. other is this in any way compatibility or exactly and they build more upon her so that's another way they kind of fuck with the rom-com thing yeah throw it in our faces yeah so we like resume our exploration of Rebecca Bunch's life um at the end of the wedding from season one um so Josh Chan and Rebecca have finally hooked up it's a the will they won't they result we all wanted <sighs> finally just for Rebecca to be happy no matter what because that's where we all work. We all want it, but she is looking in all the wrong places. Yeah. And she's not looking for love in all the wrong places. She's looking for happiness in all the wrong places. Yeah. Was I was like, fully Team Greg at this point, so yeah. I was pissed that she hooked up with Josh. Uh, I love Greg. I think he's great. I do love him. I mean, yeah. he's the bartender you always want, is Greg. He's, like, not going to talk to you a lot, but, like, has a couple of quotes about, like, the girl sitting next to you. Dude, he's the like, guy from New Girl. Oh, Nick something. He's, like, he's kind Nick of a Miller. Nick, no, you know? Nick Miller. Nick Miller. Like, just, and I love Nick, too. You know? <laughs> I can't help it. Like, the underachieving kind of, you know? Like, eventually he takes off, right? To basically get away from her, it seems, and achieve his dreams. But it's the because smart she's Because she's terrible for him. Terrible but for him. I want him for her. You're, no, you're right. He seems good for her. She's terrible for him. I don't think she's good for him. I think that's a bad match both ways. They don't bring out anything good in each other. He gave her a UTI, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> I know, he didn't kidding. give her a UTI, let's be clear. Yeah, he basically, like, pegged her with a UTI. He just gave it to her. Decided. Done. It's Thanks. not how it works. This is how UTI is I, okay. I love that song. That's in this season, yeah. isn't it? Uh-huh. And he thinks it has something to do with, like, the size of his dick. Yeah. You know, like, how yeah, that gets incorporated. Oh, my God. And I'm like, like, God. Yeah. He fucked me into submission. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, great. Now I have a kidney <laughs> infection. Because <laughs> I didn't take any medicine. Isn't that, like, more because you didn't pee after you? Well, it's just reflux of bacteria that is going upwards instead of out. Doctor of the pod. <laughs> Laura. Laura. Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura. SFL me too. Stacked. This is the this is my dream job. <laughs> oh my god, you should be a consultant on things. I tried to be a medical consultant on um armchair expert and they did not take me up on my offer. I saw that. Yeah. Mad. They should be. I could help them pronounce words. I could explain all the weird medical things to them. I could tell them about interesting stuff like that earwax is called cerumen. I'm sure that Dax would love to hear that. But anyways, I can be your um your podcast doctor. Yeah, sorry, we're a little we're a couple levels down. <laughs> I can correct Monica for corrections. Yeah, her corrections aren't always right. No, um, no, I yeah, she didn't give her easy on purpose. Duh. But then she doesn't take care of it, and then she ends up in the hospital. It's sad. But then she's fine. Pile of meet uh, Rebecca Bloom's uh, real husband is one of the doctors. Oh, really? I didn't oh, know that. Yeah, it is. I love that guy. And he has a twin who's also a stand-up. And I love this. this is perfect. I like when they do that. Okay, so this season we're exploring the relationships that have developed because Laura... Is, er, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Freudian slip there? Whoa. Want to tell us something, Laura? Yeah. I wish I could tell you something. Laura <laughs> has fully integrated into West Covina. <laughs> I thought you were going to say to you and Zach's relationship. Yeah, she is. It's a I was I was his work wife for a while, but I don't know. I think I might have been uh, replaced. Oh, uh, Caitlin is Caitlin his work wife? 
Maybe or Becky, probably Becky. Oh, okay. I don't know Becky. Should I know Becky? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in full support of uh, work wife, work husband relationships. I do think that they just happen and they're fun. Yeah. He, well, he did tell me I was his work husband, actually. Oh, huh. That's fine. <laughs> Anyways. Zach, can you be work gay? Sure. Work trans. <laughs> you can be anything you want. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I That's know. weird. Might be because I'm hungry. <laughs> but I don't get it. Because <laughs> I'm like, wouldn't you just be like a work polygamist instead of being... No, like... He like you just have multiple. Work oh yeah, why can't why can't, why can't he just have multiple? Why does he have to switch you? Yeah, <laughs> and that was it. That's what he told me from the first day. Oh, oh my god, Zach's so rude. <laughs> I didn't take it as rude. I thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm like trying to. Should I be offended? <laughs> we're like sticking up for you in some strange. <laughs> we don't know why. And... I'm trying to figure out where it flies. I look at a bunch of like women, and I was like, maybe we should be wives. Have you ever had a work husband? No, I almost always work almost exclusively with women. Oh. I don't even know if my work husbands knew they were my work husbands, <laughs> but they were basically just... The Did she crazy ex <laughs> <laughs> And then I followed a work husband. No, we just... <laughs> like, they're just your best guy friend or your best girlfriend there, right? And then you guys just... You, like, about, gravitate towards. Yeah, you, you bitch about work. You may or may not, like, there could be attraction, but it's, like, light. And then you're just friends. Like, it's just stunning. If there's like a meeting, you're you're gonna be like sitting next to them. Yeah, exactly. you're gonna. My own life is sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what my excuse <laughs> is. <laughs> you are wearing more makeup than either of us combined. I don't have anything on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a Tammy Faye. <laughs> oh my god, Tammy Shut Faye up. Baker. <laughs> I feel like I. My face. Okay. So the relationships are developing, right? Even the girls, the females are developing relationships. Yes. Um, yeah. Keep your enemies close, friends close, or something like that. That is sort of what Rebecca Friends close, doing. enemies closer. Yeah. Rebecca's, yeah, she wants to, because they've broken up, right? Valencia Josh. and Josh. Yeah. So she's infiltrating. As she does, and so she gets closer to Valencia. A little recon. Um, and they end up becoming friends, and Valencia's sad and padded. Mm, eating, <laughs> eating. Eating carbs. She's so constipated. <laughs> but I'm glad that they I make them actually friends, because yeah. that's another, like, spinning the trope on its head, which is the ex-girlfriend, meaning Valencia, doesn't have to be an evil person who is just mean to Rebecca all the time. She's like playfully mean to her, but they're friends. It's yeah. nice. And they become really good friends as the show goes on. Oh, yeah. Like, in the show, like, I think most people put their anger where it should be or with the person that they should be mad at. Like, in the Josh mm. Greg, uh, you know, romance, they didn't get mad at each other, but they were both individually mad at Rachel, which seems correct. Yeah. 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 And Valencia and Rachel... Uh, Linda wasn't mad at Rachel, she was mad at Josh, where her anger should have been. And I was like, I appreciate that. It's not like, you know, I just thought that that was very adult of them to be like, you don't have to be like, throw all of your wrath towards the woman who quote unquote took your man. It's your man who left. <laughs> yeah, you're right. She did, yeah. Know. Yeah. It's true. It's feminist as fuck. The show is feminist as fuck. It is feminist as fuck. Okay. That should be the title. <laughs> Of this episode, yes, not the show. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, because I do think about that, like, when, like, I, well, I, t- I talk about this, I think, but I was cheated on by a boyfriend in my, like, mid to late 20s, and I didn't waste anger on the girl. Like, I was mad at him, and, but I did when I found out someone told me at a bar like that there was a rumor and my best friend came up to me, told me, and she's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I need to go to Kristen's house. And when I say that, it's kind of funny because people think like, were you going to beat her up or something? And I was like, no, I demanded to see her phone and refused to leave. 
until I did. So it got a little, there were potentially some legal consequences. But did she show you her phone? She did. Because I knew her roommate, so it wasn't like I just barged through. Like, I knew someone there, and I was like, I need to see your phone. Oh, I named her. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I need to see your phone. She said, I don't want to do that to you. And I was like, well, you've already, already done, done it. it. <laughs> that's the thing you shouldn't have done yet. Yeah. You dummy. Yeah. It was, I mean, that's what I thought. I was like, okay, big eye roll. She gave it to me. All I had to do was um, go through the text from that night. And answers were there. And so, yeah. And so then I just texted him. It's over. And then, like, that was kind of went on. And I broke up with him, but we had, like, a big fight. But I never saw him again. Which was kind of interesting. I never saw him after that night. I didn't go and see him in person. I broke up with him over the phone. Thank you, Laura. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> broke up with him over the phone and then ran into him just like two years ago. And he uh, apologized. Like, we had never actually had a real talk. It was more just weird back and forth. And he said he was sorry. And I was just like, I know. And then we just chatted. It was so long ago. Like, I wouldn't hold on to it. But again, the anger was towards him. I've never really understood that you steal my man kind of thing. Like, yeah, it was selfish. It was shitty. We all hung out in the same group. Like, what she did wasn't cool. We weren't good friends. But it still, like, wasn't... It wasn't the right thing, quote unquote, to do. But he's the one I was in the relationship with. Yeah. He owed me. Like, to let me know or to break it off with me if something was happening. You... We never liked each other. <laughs> yeah, like, you're a participant in this, but I'm like, I don't know you. I have no allegiance to you. Yeah. And, and vice versa. Like, my loyalty was to him, and he's broken. And I was like, yeah, I'm mad at him. I, I just love how that always played out yep. correctly. Even in the, uh, I'm not sure if it's at the end of the season where we find out that people Paula and her husband when he cheats on her. Again, she's not like, Going out, like, you know, with all of her girls trying to beat some girl up. In a yeah. Family. She's like, you broke my loyalty. You broke yeah. my It's the focus on my higher, like, fuck you. The responsibility is where, where it lies. Yeah. And it doesn't mean, I mean, some people would argue, yeah, the be mad at the other person. What they did was awful and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I, I, I get it, but the level, it just, I think that's just trying to find. Yeah. Because you don't know Someone what else. they're being told. Like, you, you know, it could be the scenario where he's like, not even saying that he has a girlfriend. Not even, right. you know, you know, or our relationship's on, it's almost over. Or oh, yeah. Whatever, and she's just acting on the knowledge she has, hopefully. And then you just get, like, shitty people who don't care. <laughs> right. Just, like, you know, born to be a side chick. Yeah. Uh, it's not cool <laughs> to, like, go and sleep with a married dude and, like, kind of, you are entering a situation that sucks. It's not, like, a great decision. But everyone does shitty things. Good people do bad things. And so <laughs> I truly believe that. I do think it's great. I think good people do bad things. Bad people do good things. What about great people? They do horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. I noticed that too. I loved it. It was so self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> so self-aware. Uh, Rachel has done therapy. Mm-hmm. It's clear. Oh, yeah. So what else did we notice, Laura? In the titles of these, you made a great observation. Oh, yeah. So I was looking through the names of the titles in the first season, and they were all, except one exception, they were all exclamation points. Um, a lot of that. Yeah. So it's a lot of like, <laughs> like manic energy coming at you, like yeah. not thinking about the consequences. Josh's name and every single um, one. Josh's name is in every single one. That That's still going on, I think, in the second season. Yeah. But then all of the titles. Um, again, with like maybe one exception, are questions. So there's punctuation in all of these, and mm-hmm. it kind of takes you from like really excited to like, wait, let's take a step back. Let's think about is this really what's what I want? Is this really what's good for mm-hmm. me? So she starts to become a little more self aware, um, and that's shown in even things like the titles, which is so clever and awesome of uh, Rachel. And all of the characters are becoming more self aware. Mm-hmm. In this season, it seems. Yeah, we have Daryl coming out, right? <gasps> oh my god, his song yeah. about being bisexual. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my white god. Josh might be the boy I love White Josh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a subtle, like subtle strength. Subtle strength. He is for sure. 
Um, we find out things about Greg as well, right? He he's more honest about yeah. things. Yeah, we find out that Greg uh, is an alcoholic. After the wedding um, has a DUI and starts working AA. Yeah. And then him and Rachel kind of have like a final like real breakup, which I really liked. I was like, I think that there are just good ways to break up with people in bad ways, and they had a very amicable split in that episode, uh, which I really appreciated. Oh when yeah, on the bridge, like, like yeah, when they met on a park bench and just talking about how like I fucked up in these ways and I fucked up in these ways. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Like, you didn't do anything wrong, but we don't fit like we should fit to make this work. Yeah, and that's funny because. In most relationships, I mean, if you're lucky, it really, the negative things that happen aren't intentional. Like if you're, if you're in a, you can be in a really good relationship that doesn't work. And it's just because everyone's like our weird shit from our past and the things that we look for and attachment things, they're all just like bouncing against each other. And you're not for whatever reason, able to bend in the ways that that person needs. And then they can't bend in the ways you need. And it's not like I, I've never intention, like truly intentionally tried to hurt someone I was with. Like maybe out of like spite, like said certain things or it was shitty, but not like a full on. But like, even I'm then it's, you're trying up. to make someone feel the way you're feeling right now, right? I feel crappy about this. So yeah. I want to make you feel that way so we can be in that together. Yeah. And it, I don't have the like intelligence right now to, to think that that's not going to help anything. Or not even intelligence. Like when you're, at least if I'm feeling super emotional, it takes me a while to come down. Right. So right. like, it's just, it's the fight or flight kind of like lizard brain thing that you start, you're like, oh my God, how did the I autonomic nervous system out like that? Like all I needed was like a couple fucking hours, some ice cream and some TV. And instead I just, you like feed on the energy. So yeah, it just, it seems like they just were they just weren't good. They weren't good for each other. But then he had to move to get away from her. That's That was a little drastic, but I get it. I think the actor just needed to go away, it seems. <laughs> yeah, did he have something, like, something... I know that was a lie. When he was saying something about, like, having to, like, go and live with his mom. And I was like, you're, like, 28. Like, you don't have to go with He's mom. really taking care of his family. and But I feel like it's he's using it as an excuse to not yeah. go forward with stuff. Yeah. Aww. We're all just trying to get by. And then we all die. I mean, it doesn't even matter. So anyways. <laughs> oh, shit. It doesn't know. <laughs> hmm. I'm interested. But, okay. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. What's that? I don't know. Ask Zach, because it's nothing. <laughs> to him, it's... <laughs> well, he doesn't believe in anything after. Oh. All right. He's like, you can just bury me in like a Chick Fil A dumpster. I don't care. <laughs> I was like, that's yeah, cool. <laughs> I mean, okay, that's just boring. I like that's that. Lacking imagination. I think yeah. there'd be some questions if you do put him in a Chick Fil A dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think one eight seven. The cops are definitely going to be coming my way. No, I mean, like, if you, I think he meant like, like creepate. Chick Fil A dumpster, not just like, throw his body in the Chick Fil A dumpster. <laughs> God, I'm so mad. <laughs> just do it on a Sunday when they're closed. We might have to cut this. Okay. <laughs> um, oh my God. This is all happening. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. So, what are your favorite? I mean, Do-ing what happens? Two episodes are like the whole season. Uh, okay, tell us. Uh, Rebecca, and like the whole series. Rebecca. They get so, back together. Okay. They broke it up. Um, so they did get together. Yeah. Now they they moved in. Now they're back. Right. Broke up. Because Josh Ann feels really guilty about uh, living with Greg. And he's like, oh my God, we're bros. Right. Uh, we're, we're everything. And then yeah. they're like, mm, I still like Rebecca. And so they eventually they break up. And at the end, the last two episodes is just like all the tension. Yeah. Josh Ann proposes. Rebecca being Rebecca <laughs> plans a wedding for two weeks from the day that Josh. Uh, proposes. Yeah. And so they're getting ready for the wedding, and the next episode is like wedding, 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 and then um, Rebecca's dad shows up. Um, oh, and so we've God. already met Rebecca's mom, I think, like maybe in season, maybe earlier in season. We've five. met her. Season one, she's on the phone with her. Yeah. Season two, I think we meet her a little bit more. Yeah. We really meet her in season three. Yeah, yeah. She's just like, you know, seemingly a stereotypical Jewish 
New York mom, she's like very well protected, kind of a helicopter. Um, very pushy, being, critical. Yeah. Comparative with her friends' yeah. kids and having to have the best mm-hmm. status seeking. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate Jewish mothers. But this mother is yeah, like that. The same. Like you can do that. You know, tiger mom, same. Yeah. Same characteristics. You're kind of like, do you love that? That's like, you're mom. being very mean. That's mom. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we meet Rebecca's dad for the first time, who's like very rarely talked about in this complete dumpster fire of a human. Uh, well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, he is, but we also know that, or do we learn this season, the story about him is told from the mother's perspective, right? So no, we meet him, and he's dumpster fire. Okay, I feel like she she like and she sees it differently at some point where you know what I mean, where it wasn't that he didn't hate her. She stops to like she stops blaming herself for why. Yes, and the, and the way the mom does give the story, it's like you were a very needy child. We needed, you know, we needed so so such and such a thing right. for status. He wasn't able to, to provide that, so he's trash. Right. So she blamed it on her, and yeah. she was able to like see it a little differently, which is kind of like a weird. That's definitely a therapy tool, but like the narrative of your life totally drives all of your actions and. But her her mom also did what Rebecca does all the time, which is that splitting where she's saying like your dad is evil because he yes. didn't fit this exactly what I wanted instead of like yeah things didn't work out for x y and z reasons like there's no self-awareness there's just a splitting of either really good or really bad yes. that she gets and that that Rebecca does as well yes. very true uh, doctor I mean, he was like he yeah was I mean that's a that's a bad dad you know how you thought scream the dad was bad <laughs> he was not that bad he was not bad. It was terrible. Did you guys watch? Did you rewatch it? Scream? Yeah. No, I didn't. Ha- I didn't have to. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I I didn't need to feel that way. <laughs> he like he was absent. This dad. This dad literally left her. The family. This dad is not good. Both dads are bad. <laughs> that dad went to a hotel. Just Sydney's dad wasn't able to like fully leave her. Doesn't mean he had vacated the relationship. <laughs> I don't know why we're always reliving this, but he is a bad dad. We are always reliving this. <laughs> he was doing the best he could with no, the death of his wife. Not. He left her $20 and said, Fin for yourself on your mom's death day. Uh, he was gone for a night. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't his plan. My mom left pizza money. Like Your mom, your dad wasn't brutally murdered one year before. <laughs> yeah, I can't ar- I can't argue with that fact. Okay. Um but this is another bad daddy. Yeah, no, this is this This is, is the first bad dad that we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. This is bad dad bad dad central. <laughs> he is I mean, but this is also a case of I always I get a little conflicted because I don't I don't want to blame and I don't think we should blame everything on our parents, right? I don't think that's right. But the stuff that occurs and the relationship stuff that's built and the interactional stuff that happens when you're that young, it does develop you a certain way or have a hand in it. And so I just kind of, I don't know, the whole parent stuff that comes up in this, the, the, um, I go back and forth with that, you know, like it, you can't blame, no, you can't blame that all in your childhood, but damn, that is a huge segment of your life when you're developing your bad traits and good traits, a lot of them come from that. So, like, I don't, I don't know. How do you stop it? From playing your parents to a point, I think unconsciously or consciously, they are the reason you are the way you are. <laughs> you didn't know anything before you interacted with them. And with so attachment like theory, parents, parents are everything. Yeah, like according to that, parents are intending to do a subpar job. Yeah. Uh, parenting you, but like that is where you learn most things. <laughs> if like, if yeah. it happens such that you you do have bad behaviors modeled for you by your parents, it just takes a lot of self awareness to change patterns. I think the default would be to do exactly as they did and to have the same relationships they did, but it takes that extra step of of bettering yourself and going to therapy and yeah. and just being self aware. And I think that when the child does that and then the parent stays the same and isn't willing to also reflect on things, that's when it becomes problematic parenting. 
What? So when the child starts to change, but the parent doesn't realize. Yeah. Right, that's when it becomes a toxic relationship. Yeah, this is what we see in the last episode, is Rebecca... Um, it's toxic before, though, right? But then it's even more toxic. It is, but I think there's a level of, like, un... That you can say there's a level of unawareness, like, right? it's more symbiotic before someone is actually changing. Yeah. Right? Like, they're both yeah. kind of operating. But you're just not aware that. of that that yeah. your bad habits have, have um, brushed off onto them or that they're modeling the same thing they saw with you. And it's subconscious, right? So then if you're trying to change, like, I mean, God, I've been in therapy forever. And it actually, I mean, it's even hard to change once you're aware of it. Like, I, I know a lot of my triggers. Like, I've had to spend time identifying them. When it happens, one out of five times, I'm going to be able to like pull back. And that's after working on it constantly. You know, it's just it's so hard. So I'm like, we're fucked. So we basically get raised. Then we go to therapy to deal with what our parents did. And then we try to not fuck up our kids, but we do it in a different way. Yeah. I <laughs> right? I mean, I guess that's it. Whatever. I yeah. I don't think that there's anything really to change about that. It's like, never on purpose. As self aware as possible, and hope that you're partnering with someone who doesn't yeah. just trigger you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, someone yeah, who's true. also working on themselves and yeah. to be as self aware as they can be. Yeah. Um, and especially in parenting something new, like, I guess, whatever. Uh, what? But <laughs> I was like, mm, I guess. First, I was thinking, like, this could be also applied to, like, to people who just have, like, pets. But I was like, I guess babies too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating. What do you think about attachment theory? I think it's so interesting. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I don't really know what you're talking about. Oh, just how people can have, um, oh God, it's like ambivalent attachment. Then it's, what's the other one where you, you pull away and then the other one is needy and it's all based on the interactions with your parenting figure in the first couple of years insecure attachment oh yeah. right i actually recently heard about this now that you're mentioning it from from a therapist um, avoidant so it's all insecure there's secure avoidant and then ambivalent yeah and she was saying i had like secure attachment i was like great sounds good that sounds like a good word to have <laughs> wow that's awesome so what that means is the needs like when you cried when you were very young, like that need was met, right? Like you were then taken care of, but then insecure attachment can happen not because they're just like ignoring you, but there are certain things that you didn't, you didn't know it was going to be okay. Right. Cause when you're a baby, like you can't, the only thing sometimes that can stop them from feeling the way they're feeling because they have no control or whatever, um, is the parent. Or like that sense of security and safety. But if that isn't there for whatever reason, because it can't be, or you're separated from your parents by death or whatever, they leave or they there's other stuff going on, they can't do that. Then you have that fear kind of that it won't get taken care of. And that can go into adulthood. Which right. Into your like work, work relationships, even where yeah. you're like... You just don't react. Yeah. I mean, I think that she is demonstrating some insecure... Insecure attachment. Attachment. Because then, yeah, the reaction is like, oh, if, like if you're secure, then even if something doesn't go your way or they, they don't react the way you want, you don't have that fear that like it won't be there. Like that's not like the, yeah. the guttural fear that like I can get that even though I know it's not true. My reaction will be <gasps> whereas like people who are securely attached. Yeah, you, you kind of know that things flow. They go up, they go down. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what happens, especially, like, paying attention to the dialogue in the last episode of season two. Like, she's literally saying, like, Daddy, don't leave me. Yep. Um, and she says, like, she just reverts back immediately to, to a child. And it, it comes off as just, like, Rebecca kind of being Rebecca and just, like, being dramatic. And then you, and then she keeps it up. But, but that behavior is persistent. And she's just like, I will do anything to keep my daddy here. Um, and she goes and buys him all these gifts. And she like, he had asked her for money. Um, and she was originally like, seeing therapists saying, like, oh, I don't think I'm going to give him this money. Because um, isn't it kind of weird that he didn't, like, ask me for money as much? He's here to walk me yeah. down the aisle. Um, she didn't even originally think he was coming. And and then, yeah, she's just that like, don't be daddy, 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 daddy. Like, um, I'll do anything. Like, don't leave. And she gives him, like, a world's best dad mug and all this, like, 
Father's Day cards and like the weird shit. And I was like, yeah. oh my god. That to me, this is the first episode oh. where I'm just like, something's up with Bunch. <laughs> that was so sad. I was like, before this was all just like cute and like, yeah. you know, like, oh, she's crazy, but like, she's like in a harmless kind Quirky. Of, like a quirky. Like, you know, she's doing she's the a little most, manic. The literal most to get Josh Chan, but like, she's got him and like, she didn't hurt anyone in the process. Like, she didn't, like, and she does extreme things, but like, everyone turned out fine. Right. Part. This is where you see it's pathologic. Yeah. This is where, yeah, a pattern is being established. And how he's such a hero figure, even though he wasn't there for her. You know? Like, to just have that, like, preoccupation with him staying. Especially when you're the one, in her mind, and she says this in, out loud, is that she believes she's the reason why he left. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why he's this godlike figure to her. Like, So, another thing that Another great thing that happens in season two is we meet the world's sexiest baby gym or whatever. <laughs> Scandinavian Viking person. He is huge. And Nathaniel. Giant man, Nathaniel. Oh, oh my god. I love him. I love him so much. Extremely short or he was he's so, tall drink of water. <laughs> so like just big in the right way, you know what I mean? Like he was just he wasn't like over like football big. He's just like giant. <laughs> I didn't think he was that big. <laughs> Watch, he's like 6'2". He probably is, like, yeah, like 6'3". Um, but I love Nathaniel. I love him. I love him as an adversary to Rebecca. Comes um, into the law firm. is just yeah. taking that shit over yes. like the little bitch that he is. I love their confusing sexual energy. I love it. 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 Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> um, but Nathaniel um, quickly becomes the third um, third point in this love triangle that is Rebecca and Josh Chan. He's also now pulled into the orbit and oh, even yeah. though he's not fully on board with all of her antics, you can tell by, especially by the, the last episode when he goes and gets her dad for her. Yeah, he's right. into her. He goes and flies he goes and flies her dad in for the wedding. It's <laughs> insane. It's it's insane. He's a little insane. He, he is six foot two, just in case you were curious. God, he looks like six seven to me I for some reason. Really and I just learned that he lived in Chicago until he was twelve. I was gonna say I think he's one of us. Aww. He's one of us. Aww. He's so cute. That was like on my mind because you really went out about his height, so I had to know. <laughs> I, sorry, like, continue. He looks so big. So everything about um, season two obviously comes to its apex at the season finale. Where we first get uh, another look back at Trent, classic Trent, the classic Trent. I love him. He has this information. <laughs> Wait, did we Josh. bring up? Oh yeah, we did talk about Trent. He's in the first season. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Trent also a. Oh god, is he wearing a bow tie in some of this? He's just wearing a lot of layers. I remember, and I was just like, I remember. Was he wearing a turtleneck? I think so. And what's it called? He has like a dossier. Yeah. <laughs> he like pays $20 to deal to. Or He's more. Like, fancy. Get the fuck out of here. Or to Harvard to get Rebecca's like records or something. I love that. I'm like, what would be in mine? God, someone just has a file on me? I'm sure it's out there. <laughs> I don't know who has it and who wants what it. What kind of file? <laughs> There's files on you. Any place you've done. Any, if you went to a hospital, if you committed crimes. I don't think my file would be very interesting. It would just be a lot of schooling. But, yeah. (laughs) Yours would be about your Uber. Does she, like, own Lyft? Or one person takes how many Lyfts in in the course of one month? Right. How does this person own a car and still take so many Lyfts? Because parking in Chicago is a bitch. Yes. No, thank you. No, totally. Gross. Um, okay, so we've got Nathaniel. He's beautiful. He's six two. And now we're with Trent, and he's got his packet of his dossier of information <laughs> on Rebecca to give to Josh Chan, so that Josh Chan will call up the wedding, and then Trent can have a second chance. Because Trent was picked up on Craigslist or some shit to like get involved to make Josh jealous, and now he's just full on in. These men are like bees to honey with Rebecca. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, no matter what she does, it's like the the worse she is to them. 
the, the crazier the antics are. But isn't that the common trope? Is that, like, yeah. men love crazy women? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. So that's why Zach likes you. He does, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he said I was crazy enough to make it interesting. Not, like, dangerous crazy. Not, like, crazy, like, he'll wake up one day and I've just, like, moved, like, overseas. Just, just a little crazy. <laughs> That's true. They do. Uh, yeah. But it's the wedding day. Everything was beautiful. Everyone was beautiful. Like his dad was there. See him in the crowd. When she was picking on her dress, she sang a great song about having big boobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a great song. Getting back to the dress was not genius cute. songs of this entire series. But yes, I agree. That dress was not. Was yeah, it wasn't like, that great. Like David's bridal. Like we, we, well, she did it in two weeks. David's she bridal. Rich. And she needed something off the rack. And I was like, this is not. Because she was going to, yeah, she was making that shit happen. As soon as that was going to happen, she needed to Right, that's true. Down. She had to lock it down She because she knew how tenuous the hold was because she basically, like, bullied him into <laughs> marrying she her. Bullied him into marrying her? I'm trying well, to remember. They, they had that whole awkwardness with the drawer and, like, he really wasn't, like, he, he was having sex with her, but he really wasn't wanting to say that they were in a relationship and it just was... It just oh, yeah. okay. Oh, and she was gaslighting him too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he again didn't really know what he wanted, which is a common theme. And you know what kind of brings him to the series finale, he which decides is what he wants. that he decides what he wants based on just Jesus. talking to another person about it. But he's and not hot, so that was the thing. I thought that priest was kind of cute. Yeah, he is. He's, really he's, cute. he's probably my favorite character, and I was like. He was really cute. Goddamn, you take all the good ones. I was kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I know, all the priests Pun intended. Are, seriously. Yeah. All the priests are kind of like, mm. Yeah, so Josh decides to become a yeah, priest and not marry her. <laughs> Some priests can get married. It's just Catholic priests who can't get married. Yeah. I know. So you only want to date a Catholic priest? Probably. There you okay. go. You're going to compete with Jesus. Are you ready to compete with Jesus? <laughs> wow, that kind of comment destroyed the Beatles. <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if SFL is. Ready I know for you're going to break up crap. SFL. <laughs> We're more popular than Jesus. Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. John Lennon. He died. So now the. Oh, all right. Well, it's something. There's, yeah, there's a little more. But then the... So what happens? What happens at the end of this, this season? Cliffhanger. <gasps> what? Cliffhanger. The most dramatic of cliffhangers. Josh Chan. Which was for lunch. Which was fucking wild. Well. does not take it well. <laughs> No. Surprisingly, right? Because <laughs> her mental health, though, truly, even in season, in se- not even blah blah blah, okay, blah, in season two, is starting to deteriorate. It is tenuous, like because it is it's hanging on by a thread. Season one, it's sort of it's manic. You, there's exclamation there, points. There's hints. You're kind of like, wow, she could be that high, so she could probably be that low. We've seen her be depressed. Mm-hmm. Then season two is like wide-eyed like ee! like she's like on fire yeah definitely off our meds if we were ever on them yeah uh, and it's just like oh if she crashes it's gonna be like big and then even the making makeover thing which i know we didn't i think we m- might have talked about offline but just like the the prepare it, making yourself for the man getting ready all the things you have to do like she it was so sad like, what she thought that she had it all when she was blonde. And she, like, has this conversation with Josh. And she's like, oh, God, I know I had the quote. I forget what it said. But how could it get any better if it's the best it already is or something? And it's she's, perfect. like, teary-eyed saying it. And it's just like, you're going to fall. What? Why are you going to fall? And so this being left at the altar, I was like, we need to call 911. <laughs> Something's happening. I really thought there was a scene where she's like, she like runs to a cliff and I was like, she's about to jump. Like. She's about to jump. Yeah. It's an interesting way to end your series, but. (laughs) What if she did? What if she just ran off? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. But she's so, it's external stuff, you know, which I understand. I do that too. Like she's so heavily reliant on impermanent things. People's feelings towards her, towards 
others' emotions, how people are going to act or react. And her reliance on that is always shifting then, depending on what's happening. And it was just, this was sad. It was sad. I felt bad for her, even though I think she is kind of like, creates her own destiny in certain ways. It just, it was bad. Uh, yeah, I felt bad for her. I felt like there's a new... I felt like maybe there was a way that she could have predicted something like this. <laughs> because it just, this relationship wasn't solid, but I don't think yeah. she had the, she has the wherewithal, like the emotional wherewithal. And, and she shouldn't want someone like him. Like she, yes. she's a lawyer. Like she, she's very well educated. She yes. is, again, she's just reaching for the last time she felt truly happy, which was when she was in summer camp yes. when she was 16 years old. And she's just putting that all on Josh Chan. It's not fair to him because he, he's almost the same person he was when he was 16, yeah. but she's not. And she's trying to be because that's when she was happy. So it's, it was obviously never going to be a good thing in this state of mind with, with the secrets, with the yeah. gaslighting, any of that. It was never going to be a good relationship. And it was all smoke and mirrors yeah. because he's just, he's a, um, I don't want to say prop, but like he is, he has a function. He's a tool. He's a tool, yeah, like to make her feel a certain way. And a human can't be that. And also, she is fucking awesome. Like, I mean, she's shitty sometimes, you know, to people and not great to be around. But, like, it's because she doesn't realize how great she is just as a person. Do you know what I mean? Like, because she, she is. She's educated, smart, beautiful. She just... Her not being able to realize that and then, like, need something to fulfill her, plus just whatever is going on in her head, which is getting wild. So, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think she's going to... Do you think she's going to make it, guys? <laughs> What's she going to do now that Josh... She had him in her grasp and then he, he uh, got away and decided to become a priest. Is he going to continue being a priest? Is he going to do it? Oh, God. Like, and are Nathaniel. we going to see some more Nathaniel? And Nathaniel is another thing that shows her that, like, the happiness is a little misplaced because of the feeling she gets around him. So, like, he oh, right. gives some he, of those, too. So then it's like, He's oh, her shit. intellectual equal. And right. that is, and that's very attractive to her, but she has to tell herself it's not. Yeah. Because she's with Josh now. Lots of question marks. We didn't even say SFL in the last crazy ex-girlfriend. <laughs> oh, got it. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. How could this not be? An yeah, I know. It's so, so much good stuff. I think that's. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so much more, but there's we can so only you can only do so much. Like Netflix doesn't disappoint because season three is already out, so you should go ahead and keep watching. <laughs> Guys, keep binge watching. Yeah, do it. That's it. That's strong female. Some pod. of the best songs to come. Oh yeah. Seasons three and four. Like if you like. Oh yeah. Season three and four are like what solidifies this as, in my opinion, the gold standard. It's just a gold standard in like definitely um, romances, rom coms, musicals. Yeah. like one of the best ever. And it just made you appreciate season one and two even more. How lost I was, and how good really it was set up. I'm yeah, usually never surprised by anything. This surprised me. Season three and four surprised me. I did not definitely. Think yeah. There are some sprinklings, but definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, guys, just wait. Just wait. It's getting a little weird now. Yeah. It's going to get even weirder. Keep <laughs> us updated on where you are as uh, crazy ex-girlfriend. Tweet us yeah. at SFL underscore Chicago or reach out to us on the Instagram at Strong Female Pod. Yes. Rate, review, subscribe. I think I call it Apple iTunes, the Apple, Apple podcast. I don't know what the fuck it's called. Whatever the thing is that you can do that, do it. However you're listening, rate, review, subscribe. <laughs> and suggest a movie or a TV show. It's got to be on Netflix. That's it. I guess, I don't know. Doc? You got, you got anything else to say? <laughs> um, you can still find me on Instagram and Twitter at the very um, unpodcast worthy <laughs> title of LLR, spelled out E L L E, at like L Woods, um, uh, and A R E for the R part. Um, I'm on those things at that. And really, no one, no one's gonna follow me that's from really this. Breaking but my mind. I never, never knew. It's my initials, LLR. 
I know, but I read it as Ellie Lear or something like when I look at it. <laughs> well, <I> know. <laughs> now you know. Yeah, I like that. But thanks for having me again, guys. I, um, I love the show. I'm glad you're coming back. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to come back for the other ones if you can. <laughs> Hillary, yeah. it's about to get nutty. All right. Thank you. That's it. Bye. Bye.